What's up guys, Mr. Zach here. Welcome back to the fight guys. I am here joined by former UFC champion, current UFC all famer Sugar Shot Evans. What's up, man? Not much, man. Pretty good weekend. Uh, the fights was off the chain. Yeah, they were off the chain. Uh, co-main event and main event were like the most excited I've been for UFC in so long. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah. Had that big fight feel. Goes down. Saudi Arabia. Um, but I think one guy stole the show. And he might be half blind, but it doesn't matter. Shara Bullet, double reverse fist KO. Man, that was that was unbelievable, man. It was almost like there's certain moments that you watch in these fights sometimes when John Jones was fighting Stefan Bonner and then he held, grabbed a leg and then he did that spinning elbow. That was just like the move of the year. And you looking at this move right here where he did the double elbow, I mean, come on. It, it gets no better than that. Gets no better than that. The funniest part about it was Joe Rogan on the fight companion. Did you see that? No, nah, I didn't he see was it. talking about something different. He looks away. He's like talking about stand-up comedy, and they're like, "Oh, he's like, I, I missed it." He was so soft. He missed it. I mean, because it, it, there, there was something to the just the shock of seeing it. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, you, people do moves like that all the time. Yeah. And you see it in practice. He's like, man, that that should have never that, that'll never work in a yeah. real fight. And then you see somebody pull something off like that. It's like. Okay. Yeah, he's special. Yeah, he's very special. I don't. I'm. I'm wondering what they do with him because there's a lot of big fights out there for I him. I know. And I think we got to move him up the card at this point, right? Yeah. I mean, he might be a co-main eventer. Yeah, he, he's 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 showing that he's ready, you know. And when they get a chance to perform on the stage and they knock it out the park like this consistently, yeah, they, they're a main event slaughter. You know, th those yeah. are the kind of fights that people tune in to watch. Yeah, Shar Bullet is prime time. Yeah, for sure. Uh, fight for the co-main event. I don't want to call it the people's main event because it really wasn't. But Magomed on Kalaya versus Alexander <laughs> Rakic. Oh, man. We do it again. Light heavyweight. Uh, on Kalaya wins. He's going to fight Prayer next. Mm -hmm. That's pretty much set. What was your thoughts on this fight? You know, normally I'm the biggest. I, I'm, I'm the biggest hater on Uncle Live sometimes. And, and it's because not because I don't think that he's good. It's because I see his potential. I see that he could be something so great. But uh, this fight, he didn't fight the fight that I thought he should fight. But what he did was better. I, I really liked him coming out in the southpaw stance. Yeah. And, and his movement, you know, his flow, where he was landing after he was throwing those punches. He had really good stand-up, really good creativity, mixing it up. Um, he, he wrestled in spots where he needed to as far as like utilizing the cage and, and that grip control and getting against the cage. But I, I was just really impressed and it really got me excited because before I would have thought if he could stand up, if he stands up with uh, Pereira, it's going to be lights out. Yeah. But after watching that performance and seeing the way that he's, the IQ that he has on his feet, because I wasn't yeah. sold before. I felt like it's before he was kind of forcing it. Yeah. But this fight, it really showed me he's got mastery of it rather than just kind of doing it to just show that he can do it. And it's, it's a different mindset coming from that perspective. But I think him and Pereira will be a nasty fight. It will be. It will be. I was, like, miffed at Rakic's corner's advice going in the third round. Oh, my. Wow. I would switch teams. You know, I, 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 first of all, I would never tell my fighter that anyways. Because if you let the gas off of somebody who's probably going to be surging, who you think is going to be, you know, trying to come from behind, yeah. that's a dangerous dude you got. Yeah. If somebody's trying to be like, oh, I need to catch up this round, yeah. and this corner's telling him the opposite of what yeah. you're telling your guy, your guy's going to get cooked. Yeah. So if you think your guy is winning, you got to tell him to keep on doing what he's doing. Yeah. Matter of fact, you tell him he's got to do more. Yeah. Uh, that, that, that just, I mean, I don't know. clearly loses the second round. Yeah. I mean, it was so clear. Uncle I was a 15-1 favor going into the third because the, the tide had switched. Like, you could tell it was going yeah. in his favor. So at that point, you're thinking you're the corner. You tell him, you lost that round. You need this round to win this fight, you know? Yeah. No, they tell him that he's, he's clearly winning the fight. And he doesn't need to do that much. And then he lets his foot off the gas, gets beat up in the third round. And that straight left that he hit him with the third round was, was the fight. Like, that was a shot of the fight. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I mean, that, that elbow that he did was pretty dope, too. But he's, he, he, Uncle Life has, has shown some creativity. But outside of that, he's showing this ability to be able to strike on his feet and be able to solve some pretty tough puzzles on his feet. Because Rakic, he's not easy. He's not easy. started well, but he was a little disappointing. 
Yeah, you know, one thing. But scoring didn't help. Yeah, I, I, what I didn't see in Rackage was I just didn't see him trying to be first. You know, I felt yeah. like he waited a little bit too much, and I felt like because he waited, it allowed Uncle Live to get in the groove. And also, it could have been because of the fact that Uncle Live came out softball. Yeah. Somebody comes and does something you have no idea yeah. what they're going to do. That kind of takes you a little bit to be like, all right, let me let me catch up real quick. Yeah, and I wonder what stance he's going to fight prayer in. Well, now he's got both pretty proficiently. Yeah. But, but I mean... If you're going to go anywhere with Alex Padilla, you got to understand how dangerous that left hook is. So that's going to be the jousting battle, the right hand versus that, yeah. that also left got the, hand. He also got the kicks. Right, right, right. But he's got that wrestling. <sighs> Anyways, we can talk about this forever. <laughs> yeah, we can. Um, co-main event. Oof. Hamza Shamaya versus Robert Whitaker. We heard it all week. We heard it all camp. Hamza Shamaya was looking better than ever. He had a new team. He was so focused on the grappling. He took it to another level. He wasn't overtraining. He was healthy. Oof. Boy, did we see that. I, I, I was beyond, uh, I, I was super impressed with them. I mean, Bobby Knuckles is that dude. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I, even after that performance, he's still that dude, right? Yeah. He's that kind of guy. And to see the way that Hamza just chewed through him like that, and, and really just took his whole face off. Yeah. That, that to me was just like, that's one of those performances. If you're next in the queue to fight him, you're like, yo, you know what, man? <laughs> Maybe there's somebody else. Because, like, it, 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 was, it was a very beastly performance. Yeah, that was terrifying. <sighs> wow. Yeah. I mean, so he takes him down fast, right? Yep. At one point, it looks like Robert's going to get out of it. He does a great job chain wrestling. Gets him down again. You're like, wow. Okay. And then gets his neck. And, like, you know, you think, you know, he's going to fight him off a little bit. No, it was an instant tap. And Whitaker is so tough. You're like thinking, what's going on? He caved his entire jaw in. And, and just think about the pressure. Like, this dude must have been, like, squeezing watermelons in training. Like, you know, it, it, one of those trainings that they probably do is they probably walk around and just, like, squeezing a yeah. heavy bag and just squeezing Have you it ever because, been squeezed like that in no, your jaw? Yeah, no. I could I couldn't even he, imagine he, it. He but caved he, his lower jaw in and his teeth all fell out. But you know what? The lower jaw is the most vulnerable because there's no mouthpiece down there. The mouthpiece yeah. is on the upper teeth. So the bottom teeth is vulnerable. So... I mean, dumb luck or just ape strength or strategy. Who knows? But it was terrifying. And whoever he has to fight next, got to be like, yo, this dude is a, is a little yeah. something different. I mean, and he's now had, he's locked in, too? Yeah, he's had some insane squeezes before, yeah. too. So I, I think it's just him. I don't know what his training. I don't know. And he doesn't look like, you don't look at him and think, wow, that, that guy is so strong. Nah. Like, he doesn't have that look, but he... I kill you, brother. <laughs> he's right. He, like, literally could kill some of these guys. He, yeah. If there was no he proved ref. It. He yeah. proved it. He proved it. He literally would kill like, some of these guys. I'm, I'm just like, yo, you know what, dude? You got it. Because, but you know what, though? This is the guy that I seen when I went to Couture's gym, yeah. and I was in the gym, and I'm like, yo, who is that? And I'm like, that's Hamza, and he was just bodying people in yeah. training. You know, that's that guy. And, and now he's in a place where he's you know, got everything all set. He's got a camp totally dedicated to him. He's got a coach that can bring him mentally to the place he needs to yeah. be, but also technically and everything else and make him focus and get even better in his number one strength, which is wrestling. Yeah, I also felt like he was a lot more controlled. Yep. Again, than against Kamaru, where he wasn't, when he got up, he wasn't even tired. He didn't break a sweat. He wasn't huffing yeah. and puffing. I think he could have kept that same consistent pressure up for another Four rounds. Absolutely. You know, after that fight, man, I text Kamaro and I'm like, yo, all right, man, you, you, you pretty official, man. You yeah. pretty official. I, because, I told you that. Like, yeah, that, he, like he, that stamp Kamaru, because yeah. I, I said that. I know it was 10 days notice, but, like, I don't think anyone else in middleweight would have survived him no. with his neck like that. No. And, and, and going into that fight, Kamaro was already hurting. Yeah. You know, and he was just like, you know what, I'm probably going to have to get surgery, so let me just, you know, go and just... Let this fight happen. Yeah. But, I mean, damn. Yeah. No, I, yeah, no one else could fight off Hamza, you know, for nah, that long. That dude's an ape, straight yeah, up. Yeah, he's an ape. He's definitely an ape. So, he's going to fight Drikus next. <laughs> and Drikus is gonna the one guy him. who's as strong as him. Uh, yeah, Drikus is strong, but 
I, here's the thing about it. I, I've seen Drinkus, like, his last fight with Izzy. Yeah, he, he, he won it, right? But damn it if it wasn't a good fight. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It, 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 was a, it was a real good fight. And, and, I, and I say that not to say that Izzy wouldn't stand a chance against Hamzat. I say that to say Izzy was able to survive and do better than all right in a grappling department where with a guy like Hamzat, he's eating that. He's eating those positions, bro. Yeah, but we don't know Drigas's defense as much. Like, who tried to right. grapple with him? You right. know what I mean? That's what I'm saying. And he's so... And Drigas just has a habit of winning fights he shouldn't. Yeah. And he's just as big and strong. Like, he's ridiculous. So, I don't... I don't know. That's a great fight. It's probably one of the best fights in the UFC. And yeah, I, think I think the winner so. has to fight Pereira. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah, you don't... Sean, you're kicked out. Because you've never done anything like that. You know don't don't mean? go against my boy, Sean. Hold on now. But you see him go on Twitter. He's like, Hamza can't get the next shot. I have to get it. I mean. He got skipped, bro. Yeah, he, he, he got skipped. If you finish Robert Whitaker in the first round. But, you know, if anybody has knowledge of what Hamza can do, it's it Strickland. is Sean Strickland. They used to change the same Yeah, and the rumor is Hamza was eating him. Well, damn. That's like what it's like. I don't. I think, I don't know. I don't think Sean or Izzy would have a chance against Hamza. I think Whitaker was like the second worst matchup, and I think Drikas is like the only one I could see. I mean, up what, what's so terrifying is the fact that, you know, you say every fight starts on the feet, right? So there is that, that, that striking exchange that has to happen. But with Hamza, the way that he closes the distance, yeah. the way that he, you know he's going to shoot and you yeah. still can't stop him. No. And then if and then once you hit ground down to the ground, it's over. It's like getting jump, It's like getting pulled in water with with a dang crocodile. Yeah, no, You're he's cooked. like he's like a boa constrictor. <laughs> it's terrifying. Kabig. Man. Yeah, Kabig. That's definitely Kabig. Yeah, that's Kabig. His his wrestling just ridiculous. Like and people like Bo Nickel, whatever, shitting on his wrestling, bro. None of you guys are wrestling in MMA like him right now. That's the one I want to see. Yeah, but like. Can't Hamza just keep that standing and beat him up? I don't know. I mean, Bo's Bo a great wrestler. Great wrestler. Oh. Is he that effective in mixed martial arts? It, it remains to be seen. And I, 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 I want to see. I want to see him really get tested. I mean, he's he's shown amazing uh, growth with his striking yeah. and just understanding of the strike. But it remains to be seen. Is he that dude? If he has somebody who can make him have to do this, the stand-up battle. Yeah, because like Dan Henderson, an Olympic wrestler, didn't do much of it in the sport, right? Like, at the highest level, wasn't grappling right, dudes, right? right? Yeah, I mean, he, he was... was so, like, I saw John Jones destroy him in a grappling match. Yeah. And who wrestled at Buffalo State or something. Like, it, like it all... Kamaru, where did he wrestle? Mm -hmm. Very smaller school, right? Right. And, like, that's when Ben Askren was talking all that shit, but, like, the guy can grapple. <laughs> like, the MMA grappling is just totally different. Totally different. Yeah, it's a different... Different animals. So we'll see with Bo Nickel. He's got a lot to, uh, I guess he's got Paul Craig. That's a, that's a good fight. Yeah. But if you're going to be talking about Hamza and all that, you got to eat Paul Craig, he bro. You got to eat his ass up. You got to kill Paul Craig. <laughs> he he cannot leave up. that octagon standing. No, he better If you him talk up. about the big names, hell no. You got to yeah, really him. take it to him. Yeah. Really take it to him. The main event. Oh, man, this was sad. Uh, Ilya Taporia versus Max Holloway. Taporia. Similar to Hamzat, an undefeated guy in his 20s uh, knocks Max Holloway out, fresh off of a Volkanovski knockout. I think this is the best string of wins in the history of the sport. You know, uh, man, that, that fight was a hard one for me because I, I'm, I'm a Max guy, you know, yeah. and, I, and I really believe that. I think it was hard for everyone. Yeah, I, I believe that Max could do it. And, and, and it looked like at times, it looked like Max was about to get off. You see Max starting to get in his groove and he's moving yeah. and then he's catching him with the jab. And Ilya's eating some mean shots. Like yep. he's, he's eating some mean shots. But was just so dynamic to me was just Ilya's strike and flow. The way that he flows when he strikes is so it, it's so beautiful in itself because he had he's hitting you ba 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 you block here but then he hits you in an unexpected spot yeah. which goes off the rhythm of what you think his body is going to be doing and he catches people all the time with that nasty left hook man yeah to me he's the best boxer in the UFC <sighs> yeah I can say that yeah his his the the speed the speed that he has on those punches. 
is is ridiculous. Yeah, it's ridiculous. It's like, you know, if you have to stand up to a barrage of punches for him, what do you do? Do you clinch and try to get close you can and clinch yeah. soon as he lands one, or do you sit there in the pocket and try to try try to dodge him like you Neo or something, dodging bullets? Because there's one something's gonna hit you. He's just like more athletic than these guys. Like, yeah, he's got the skills and this. I don't know. His like physical intangibles are insane. Like he's put it all together. He's yeah. only twenty seven. Yeah, it, it it it's remarkable because he's he's demolished, you know, two of just the 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 staples of the one forty five division. Staples of the UFC. Like, yeah, like he like demolished him. Like two of the best fighters ever. Demolished him, and, and he's so young in their prime. And, and now he's on like this. You know, it, it's kind of reminiscent of John Jones when he was. You know, when he was coming up, and then he was taking out champion after champion after champion. Yeah, it, but this is, like, a little bit different because, like, those guys, I felt like were a little more over the hill than these two. Right. I mean, Holloway just knocked Justin Gaethje out. Yeah, yeah. And Ilya deserves that BMF belt. Yeah, I know. He is a BMF. Well, well, I mean, here, here, here's, here's what got me thinking, though. And like, I was... It, it, was, it was crazy, but it's got me thinking, like... <sighs> Listen, I, I think Islam is is dope, and his stand up has gotten so much better. But yo, if Ilya fought, yeah, Makhachev, but you got to build that one up. You got to build it up, but it, it's it's still one that when I think about that matchup and just think yeah. about the problems that he would give, yeah, Makhachev, yeah, and and his ability to answer the call as far as wrestling yeah. is concerned. It's got me thinking, like, man, this this dude could be on a trajectory that, you know, that that could be that could be something else. Yeah, um, it seems like he's destined to be the biggest superstar in the sport. He might already be there. He's getting there. He, he's got that. He's got, he's the got swag. Sergio Ramos he's, with he, him. He's got that. He got that um, swag with him, man. He's got Real Madrid promoting him. Like this yeah. isn't like nor like these are massive, 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 massive cosigns. Like the biggest in the world. Yeah. Uh, he's yeah. He's getting to that like. Doesn't speak quite like McGregor, but like the attitude, the swagger, the oh, confidence, swag. the knockouts. Yeah, he's same division. Yeah, yeah, he's he's probably the closest thing we've seen to Connor. And then he's fight, smooth, and then man, he's smooth. He got that smooth look to him. Look good in the suit. As far as being like a prodigy in the cage, it's like a John Jones. Yeah, where he's taking out these guys that making it look. I mean, a Max did win the one round, but it wasn't too much. Where I mean. I mean, this is a guy who had never been knocked out in the UFC. I know. He had the greatest chin in the sport. I know. Took him out and wrestled him. Yeah. You're not supposed to be able to do any of that to Max Holloway. No. I don't know. I, Max has got to move up, right? I, I think that Max just needs to maybe just, yeah, maybe move up, but take some time to recalibrate himself. Yeah, clearly. You know, just... just I, was, I mean, he's had a hell of a year, man. Yeah, I, I think they should do Volkanovski Lopez and have the winner fight Deporia. Mm, I like that. I don't want to. I, I think that's the best way to determine. Mm-hmm. Right? Those two. Yeah. They deserve it. And I think Volk should get a win before getting a rematch. Especially as he got knocked out by Islam before. I, I think that would be best. Those two. Yeah. I, it'd be interesting to see where, where Volk, Volk, Volk is at mentally. Like. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Does he got the eye or tiger back? Because after being a champion so long and on top for so long, there's there's a strong recalibration process that you have to do in order to realize that now you're back in the hunt again. Yeah, and we don't want to see him go in there and get knocked out like that no. again by Ilya. Like, that would be... If he knocked out Volkanovski, Hallway, and Volk back to back to back, like... Well, he, he is... He is they, they said they're going to fight again, though. That's what they're, uh, they're saying. They're saying they're going to fight again. Yeah, so I hope they just do the Lopez fight. Yeah. I at least want to see him beat Lopez before I'm ready to throw him in there with Ilya. I mean, two knockouts is bad for Volk. It is. I, I, just, I just hope that... would be three straight. Yeah. I, I just hope that Volk is just, you know... How can you avoid getting up. knocked out? I don't know. Yeah. How do you avoid him for five rounds when he's flowing like that? I mean, Max was having some success with the jab, but at the end of the end of the day, you have to be able to advance on that jab to keep him off of you, and that was the reason why Ilya started to be able to come forward because Max would throw the jab, but he wasn't really putting combinations on it, and then after a while, Ilya was just slipping off that and going with combinations. Yeah, 
maybe like I don't know. I don't think anyone in the history of featherweight beats him. Maybe yeah. the Conor the Faraldo. I guess he hit so hard at 145, mm-hmm. he could knock him out right. for sure. He, he needs, a, yeah. Because you would have to really hurt him. Rocking. Yeah, you can't. I, I don't think Volk has the power to keep him up off him. No, I mean. And stop the it, shift. I, I don't think so, man. I, if, if this fight is happening sooner rather than later, then I'm like, ooh, it's gonna be a tough one for Volk. Yeah, I don't know. There's not a lot of like maybe like Dustin could box with him. Like, that'd be a great fight one. But, like, I don't know. There's, like, he's just so good. Yeah. Ilya Deporia, superstar. No other way to say it. He's fighter of the year, mm-hmm. too. He's got to win it over Poetan. Yeah. The wins are just too good. I, 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 I got to say Poetan, though. He, bro. I got to say Poetan. Knocking out Max Holloway? It's one of the top five wins ever. Yeah, but for me, as Never a light heavyweight guy. For me, as a light heavyweight guy, but just seeing what Poetan has been able to do and, you know... <sighs> The, the, the amount of title defenses that he had in such a short amount of time. I mean, that, that's, that's, that's no Vulcan joke. all the way in the same calendar year? I'm just saying, man. Imagine if someone told you that the year before. It, I would have never believed it. That's ridiculous, man. This kid's ridiculous. 27 years old. 27 years old. This coming Saturday, we've got a fight night. Not quite this. It's something. Co-main event, Rose Namajunas taking on Aaron Blanchfield. You would think the winner gets a title shot here. What are your thoughts on this fight? You know, I, I think that um, Rose is kind of getting back into her form. You know, and, and watching Blanchfield against uh, Faro, I felt like she had some gaps in yeah. understanding when it came to being able to that transition from striking to grappling. And no doubt about it, if she's able to, you know, engage with you in a position where she can catch you in transition or catch you on, on some kind of slip or whatnot should make you pay in the, in the grappling department and Rose has been known to, to get suffocated sometimes on the bottom even though she's a, a very skilled wrestler in her own rights but I just feel when it comes down to it you know Rose is going to be able to be light on her feet yeah really explode the expose the holes with the stand up and just you know move and and really utilize her wrestling when she needs to um Rose seems to me as if like she she needed some time to kind of get her mind wrapped around what her new goals and the new agendas are in this new weight class. Yeah, she seems like a really bad matchup for Blanchfield. Yeah, I wouldn't have rushed into this fight if I was Blanchfield's team. Well, I mean, it. it, it well, see, when I watched Blanchfield fight for Rose, I, I was, I, I thought going into that fight that she had everything that she needed as far as. To, to be a true player and be able to, to get the fight to Faro. But the, the thing that I seen happening was just to stand up, you know, just to stand up. She just seemed lost out there a lot of times, yeah. understanding. As a fighter, what I will always tell people and what I would do and would help me get better with my strike in the transition, I would always understand what punch led to what takedown. So if I was going to throw a right hand, I would understand yeah. how that allowed me to flow into a double leg or into a single or a left hook. And then if it allows me to go into a, a double leg or whatever it may be. But I always practice one punch to that one shot. And by doing that, I knew no matter what happened, if I felt something I didn't like, I could knew if I did this, that leg was going to be there because I, I practiced the timing of it. She hasn't done that or it doesn't appear that she's done that. Yeah, um, Rose not as big as Fioro, right? Fioro's just right. a big girl, yep. big for the weight class, strong, and uh, beat both of them. So they're both kind of her daughters, I guess. But uh, we'll see. We'll see, main event, flyweight bout, Brandon Moreno taking on Mr. Amir Albazi. Albazi kind of getting overlooked. Mm-hmm. Getting wins. Yeah. He gets skipped over. They give Kaya Sakura, UFC newcomer, in his day de- UFC debut. The title shot against Pantoja. Albazi's got to prove himself against Moreno here. What are your thoughts on this fight? Well, I mean, Albazi has been coming back from just uh, so much outside of the cage. You know, he yeah. had a heart surgery, then he had a neck surgery. And, and I feel like all of that has amounted to just breeding that hunger that he has yeah. in him. You know what I'm saying? He's an Iraqi kid, and he, and he comes with a lot of that. That, that passion, that, 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 that hunger, yeah. you know, and he wants to be the first Iraqi champion. So he's got a different look in his eyes as far as when it comes to what tomorrow holds for him. He's never been to the top. Moreno, on the other hand, he's been to the top. 
You know, he's he's had those wars inside the cage. Yeah, I didn't like Kovalev's last fight. That well, that's the thing. When you've had such wars and wars at such a high level, you do tend to 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 drop off at times yeah. and and to have to find a way to to recalibrate yourself. I said it before, but you have to find a way to say, okay, um, I need to remake the game because the the whole fighting and, and trying to. Uh, strategically put yourself with these different matchups and be able to, you know, it's, it's the Game of Thrones, right? Yep. That's what it is, making it to a title shot. It's the Game of Thrones. And being able to uh, make that rise to the top, you got to be able to play a game in your mind. And when you make it to the top, there's another game that you got to play. But as a challenger or being somebody who's already been at the top for so long, he's got to make a new game in his mind. And his last fight didn't show me that he has, but going into this camp, being able to, you know, put everything all in order as far as from a family standpoint yeah. and being able to take that break off. Yeah. I feel he's coming in this fight's hungry as well too. Yeah. 125 pounds though. It's like it's a steep drop off. It is. Right? Like your timing, your reflexes, your speed are the most important things. Mm -hmm. Hard to have longevity in this division. Mighty Mouse did it. Yeah. Not many other guys. So you think that Moreno's losing a step? Is yeah. That, is that what you're saying? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. You know, I, 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 here's the thing. I can't, I can't discount his last performance and say that's indicative of him slowing down, right? I, I can't count that as that because you, you do have those performances, the performance dip when you just are not fighting for the belt no more, right? Or you're not yeah. at that high big fight because he's had the highest of the highest. He's had yeah. he's had absolute wars, like legendary fights yeah. inside that cage. And at some point, those yeah. wars, they do take but a toll. But has he left it all in there? Right, they do take a toll. So yeah. it, it's, it, I'm, I'm sorting out, was that, you know, the, the beginning of the decon, decline his last fight? Yeah. Or does he, was that just him saying, you know what, now I need to kick it in gear? Yeah, and I wonder if either of these guys were offered to fight Asakura. Because Roy yeah. Ball was, and he declined. I don't know, man. It, it'd be interesting. To, I, I feel like, well, I, they, they probably were, but they, they I mean, for one, El Bazi was hurt. Yeah. And for two, Morena was taking a break. Yeah. So. I think that's how they landed on Asakura. I think yeah. they probably offered, like, they had to have offered at least three guys. Well, I mean, yeah, I feel like. I feel like they the UFC they, debut title shot is nuts. But I felt like they, they matched these two up together because of the fact that they're both coming off of a break. Yeah. Yeah, and I don't know how you match up Royval and Kai Car France now. Yeah. I don't know. And I know they're not like quick to like give these guys pay races. <laughs> I mean, these guys get taken care of, man. Like the one, <laughs> Well, Roy Ball was like, I, they, they offered me like to fly to Asia or whatever in no extra money, and they wouldn't renegotiate my contract at all. Mm. It's like, why would I do that? Right. You're going to so, lose money. <laughs> yeah. I mean, this is a vision they almost cut. Yeah. So, I don't know. I'm Mr. Zach. That's Sugar Shot Evans. You just watched the fight, guys.